Magyanadimadanasyaganjanashalakaya Chakshurun Miditam Dhina Tasmai Shi Gurave Nama. Today's verse I'll be reading from the Bhagavad Gita chapter number eight, text number eight. This chapter is called Attaining the Supreme. And in this verse, Krishna recommends practice, which is also Vyasa. Yes, in this verse, Krishna recommends a Vyasa, which also means practice. In the translation of this verse, he who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of God, it is mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Partha, is sure to reach me. And this is Srila Prabhupada's purport. In this verse, Lord Krishna stresses the importance of remembering Him. One's memory of Krishna is revived by chanting the Maha Mantra Hare Krishna. By this practice of chanting and hearing the sound vibration of the Supreme Lord, one's ear, tongue, and mind are engaged. This mystic meditation is very easy to practice and it helps one attain the Supreme Lord. Purusha means enjoyer. Although living entities belong to the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord, they are in material contamination. They think themselves enjoyers, but they are not the supreme enjoyer. Here it is clearly stated that the Supreme Enjoyer is the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his different manifestations and plenary expansions as in the Ryan, Vasudeva, etc. ファネトリックスパンジナラヤナバースデーバなどとしてあ何拡張体っていうのだなんとか拡張体ファネ拡張体ファネ拡張体ファネ拡張体ファネ拡張体ファネ拡張体ファネ拡張体ファネ拡張
姿、どんな姿であってもそれを考えていくことができます。それはナラヤナであったり、クシナであったり、ラマであったりします。This、それはハイクシナのマントルを唱えることによって考えることができます。This practice will purify him, and at the end of his life, due to his constant chanting, he will be transferred to the kingdom of God. Yoga practice is meditation on the super soul within. 自分の心の中にいるスーパーソウルへの瞑想です。Similarly, by chanting Hare Krishna, one fixes his mind always on the Supreme Lord. 同じように、Hare Krishna を唱えることによって、自分のマインドを最高主に固定することができます。The mind is fickle, and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. マインドというのは、こう動きやすいものですけれども、故に、そのマインドを、クリシナのことを、uh, 考えるというふうに強要してマインドを使うということが必要です。One example often given is that, the, that of a caterpillar that thinks of becoming a butterfly and so is transformed into a butterfly in the same life. その一つの例としてよく挙げられるのは、えー、青虫が。自分はいつの日か長々になると考えそして、うん、その同じ、えー、その生きている間にね長々になることができるという例が挙げられます。Similarly, if we constantly think of Krishna, it is certain that at the end of our lives we shall have the same bodily constitution as Krishna. 同じように私たちがクリシナのことをいつも考えていれば、うん、私たちがの死後。クリシナと同じようなそのこ同じように構成されたに体を持つということもそれも明らかなことです。I offer my respectful obeisances to His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami p a d m a d h 私は私のスピリチュアルマスターである A.C. Bhaktivedanta Shri Shri r a p r a b a d h a に尊敬の礼を捧げます。And to all the devotees who are present here today and who have joined us online。そしてここにいらっしゃるディボーティの皆様そして。オンラインで参加してくださる皆様に尊敬の礼を捧げます。You are all Vaishnavas and therefore are the most worshipable in the whole world. であなた方は皆さん、バイシナバですので世界中で最も尊敬,尊敬されるべき人たちです。シュラ・プラパ begins explaining this verse by talking about the importance of remembering Krishna. で、プラパパはこのクリシナをね、思い出すということの大切さ。について最初にお話しされました。So Krishna begins this verse by saying, Abhyasa Yogin. And Abhyasa means that one has to do thing, something consistently over and over again until one learns how to do it. So, one thing to keep in mind when you are practicing. The remembrance of Krishna through chanting Hare Krishna. そして、ハレクシナを唱えることによって、クリシナを思い出すという、そういう訓練をしている最中に、ちゃんと覚えていけない、覚えていかなきゃいけないことがあります。Is that you're not the only one who needs practice. Everyone does. でそれは、自分だけがね、この修練をする必要があるんではなくて、他の人もみんなそういう必要があるということです。So,、uh, don't feel that you're, that you're at a disadvantage. 自分だけがね、不利な立場にあると思ってはいけません。You, you have a, the greatest advantage of all. 本当は、本当に自分はいい立場にあるんだ。You have a human body. というのは、自分は人間としての体を持っているから。And the, the human body is especially designed for this kind of practice. で人間の体だというのは、特にそのような訓練をするためのものです。And therefore, if you 
and learning to fix your mind on the mantra, then you'll become successful. And so, um, before I go into the next several points about practice, I'm going to take a couple of reflections. I'd like to also take the opportunity to welcome, welcome Harigana Prabhu back to Japan. And somehow or other in the Jews and, and Gita have magically appeared. <laughs> and to top it all off, Mohini Murti's back. How are you doing? And to everybody else, thank you for coming to this class. Nothing sweeter than a Bhagavad Gita class at the end of the day. So, be, uh, before I go on to the other points uh, that I hope you'll like about practice, let's just see if you have any reflection about the first. で、今お話ししたことについてね、感想とか心に残ったこととかありましたら教えてください。いや、そのアビアさん、その、ステルトギーの大変なので、その、なんかこう、あの、しんどくてギブアップしたくなるときに、なんかあの、みんなが必要で
そして、この今までに何回も試されてきたこの方法を勉強してるわけですから。Like So, uh, the second one is that uh, practice, when you practice, it puts uh, brains, uh, you develop uh, more brains in your muscles and in your uh, impulses. You become, the, you become well informed in how to, how to act properly. And the more you practice, the more the, that your whole body and mind have memory of uh, good habits. Every day that you practice correctly is uh, more momentum towards being able to practice correctly in the future. It's proven through science that we actually develop our brains more when we practice. And also, well, we get help from Krishna. When he sees that we're trying to practice. And uh, therefore, it's important to have daily practice. Because in a 24 hour period, a lot can happen. We can become distracted by uh, other worldly pursuits. Our senses can become attached to things. And by degrees, we can be pulled off in the wrong direction and develop bad habits. So it's best to make a plan to have good daily practice. And if you make your practice the central focus of your day, then it begins to make room for you in, in your life. It's like a wedge. A wedge has a small end and a big end. And if you start with whatever practice you can do now, and you do it consistently, and you practice focusing when you do your practice, then it begins to open up a space for you to practice more. And a taste for doing it. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in one of his songs that the most important asset that one can acquire 
で自分が手に入れることのできる一番大切なものというのはクリュナ意識を学んでいく修練していくための味わいである。Uh, this taste uh, protects you from the material world. <coughs> And actually, it's, it's not that we have a lack of time in our lives to practice. It's actually that I have a lack of taste. Because everybody gets the same amount of time. 24 hours in a day. And we decide how to use that time based on our taste. So before I go into the next point, I'll just take a couple of reflections. Yes, p r a b h u I like the point Prabhupada makes in the purport that we actually do have to exert some force on the mind. Research them? Force. We have to, we force have to exert the mind to hear the Hare Krishna mantra. And then that made me think of the verse that you taught us the other night from the 11th canto where Krishna is talking about how to control the mind and the senses. He's telling your dhava that controlling the mind and the senses is like controlling the horses with the reins. But there's a kind of a, a subtle technique to how you do that, Krishna says. You have to pull on the horses a little bit and then give a little bit. <laughs> and then gradually. And I think that daily, like that, it's like having a daily practice that's doable. Uh, but not beyond your current capacity. And self criticism. We're comparing ourselves to others. Except in the sense that everyone's struggling. <laughs> But to think that people aren't struggling as much as me or having those kind of thoughts. Will only serve to discourage us or make us weaker. So it's kind of a balance that we have to find. And then one other thing you said that、uh, when we use the brain,、uh, it will、uh, become stronger. It actually, the nerves will grow. It's like when we repeatedly think of some negative thing. One, real, one reason is, is because we've created pathways in the brain. So, similarly, if we regularly hear a chant, 
その定期的にチャンティングをしたり、聞いたりすることによって。The brain will respond by creating those pathways. And the other thing is, is the science has discovered that it doesn't matter how old you are. Even with people that have dementia.、Right? <laughs> ボケボケ。それで、老人のようにボケてる人がいてもね、例えば動物を連れてきてこうなぜさせたり、音楽を聞かせたりするとね、やっぱちょっと生き生きとし,きしてきますよね。Thank you. So it's extremely important to practice chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. だから、ハレクシナマントラを唱える修練をするということは、非常に大切なことです。Because when we chant Hare Krishna, we directly associate with Krishna. And by repeating his name, we express our devotion. Especially when we chant from the heart. We may think while we're chanting, Krishna,、uh, please engage me in your service. Some great devotees pray, My Lord, I've never served you. Please allow me to do something for you. And other devotees consider that I'm very fallen. Please、uh, pick me up from this ocean of material existence. And when they chant, they consider that they're like helpless children and they're crying out for their mother. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, For those who are thus dependent on me, I'm very swift to come and deliver them from the ocean of Also, if you're confused about what to do in your life, Which can happen very easily. Because being a human is a very confusing situation. Our main purpose for existence is spiritual advancement. But we're born into an ocean of problems. にもかかわらず私たちはこういういろんな問題がある場所に生まれてきてしまう。And they don't stop. They keep coming throughout your life. いろんな苦しいこと、困難なことっていうのは、その人生を通じて何回も何回も自分のところにやってきます。And you can never figure out exactly what to do. で、それは一体どうしたらいいのかっていうのはね、その正確,正確なところはわからない。Most situations are impossible. 大体の状況っていうのはもうどうしていいかわからない状態。If you do it, you'll be in trouble, and if you don't do it, you'll be in trouble. 自分がこれをやっても問題,になる問題が起こる。やらなかったとしても問題が起こるそういうような状況が続いてくるわけですね。So in that case, what should you do? でそういう状態になった時,なった時に一体どうしたらいいんでしょうか ?Lord Chaitanya says, you should chant Hare Krishna. チェイタニア神はじゃあハレクシのマントルを唱えなさいと言ってるんですね。For the example, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a devotee named Saburi Roy. チェイタニア Mahaprabhu は Saburi Roy という名前の被験者がいました。When Saburi Roy,、uh, he early in his life, He was a highly placed government person. And he had a servant who helped him in all the things that he did. It was a young servant. 
servant was a Muslim and, and Subhuti was a Hindu. And that boy became like a son to him. And once or twice to correct him, he had, uh, he had hit him with a stick. Later in life, that boy became a king. And then Subhuti was one of the subjects. And one day, the king's、uh, wife asked him, Why do you have that mark on your arm? She said, Once when I was a boy, s u b u r i Roy had corrected me because I stole something and he, he slapped me with a stick. So he had asked, she had asked the king. That's her husband. そうですね。But she kept insisting. So you have to do something. So finally, this Muslim king he took some water from a, a pot that was used by a Muslim and sprinkled on Subhuti Roy. At that time, that meant that Subhuti Roy had now become a Muslim. So he went to many Hindu priests. Subhuti Roy did. He said, What should I do now? And everybody told him something different. One priest told him, You have to drink a hot boiling ghee and die. <laughs> <laughs> This was a serious situation. He was ostracized from society. And these authorities were telling him, You have to kill yourself. He was very confused about what to do. So someone told him, Go surrender to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he did. うう and Mahaprabhu told him you should chant Hare Krishna. Because chanting Hare Krishna clarifies everything. Once when I was a brahmacharya, I was distributing books in the Los Angeles airport. <coughs> I was having a bad month. And a really bad day. And I called my mother on the phone. There were no cell phones at that time. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. And I said, Mom, I'm having a bad day. And a bad month. And she said, You take that bag of yours and you put your hand in it and start chanting. <laughs> It's like Krishna was speaking through her. So I did it. And I felt better. And now, whenever I have a bad day, 
I grabbed that bag and I put my hand in it and started chanting. Because my mom told me to. <laughs> and there was another devotee named Tapana Mishra. And Tapana Mishra, he was a great scholar. But he read so many different books that he could no longer ascertain the goal of life. One doesn't need to read too many books. Reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita is sufficient. We won't come to the end of it anyway. But Tapan Mishra, he had a very powerful brain and he read too many books. He couldn't ascertain what the goal of life was or how to attain it. Very confused. And one night, in a dream, a Brahman came to him and said, You go to Nimai Pandit and you surrender. And it just so happened Nimai Pandit had come to town. So Tapanamisha went to meet him. And he surrendered to him. And he asked him, What should I do? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You should chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and Tapanamisha became a great devotee. And all the uh, confusion was cleared. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us the way to clear our confusion. And to come directly in touch with Krishna. Through chanting his names. And Rupa Goswami says that when you start to chant, you may not like it. But he says when you're diligent about it and you keep practicing, you'll gradually get a taste for hearing the, the name Hare Krishna. Then all your desires will be fulfilled. <laughs> Because Krishna is the source of all knowledge. And the name of Krishna is transformational, it, it changes us. We actually become better people by chanting. We discover good qualities we didn't know were in there. And we begin to see the world in a different way. We also get a sense of detachment from material things. And naturally, our intelligence becomes very sharp. We're able to see the difference between those things that are good for us and those things that are bad for us. And we have the strength to make the right decision by chanting Hare Krishna. So this is the most recommended type of practice in the age of Kali Yuga. It's emphasized over all other practices. So there's a lot of different ways that you can emphasize the chanting in your life. One is to make a, 
a, a sankalpa or a determination that I will chant with attention. If you write down your intention and say that when I chant Hare Krishna, I will pay attention to the chanting. And that if my mind wanders away, then I'll bring it back. And just by doing this every day for a while, one becomes a very powerful yogi. And gradually, love of God will awaken within the heart. Because when, when somebody chants Hare Krishna, Krishna uh, feels obliged to stay in that person's heart. And he also helps the devotee from within to remove any obstacles. And the Hare Krishna mantra only has three, three words. Hare is addressing the internal potency of the Lord. It's in, in the vocative form, it's like a prayerful form where you, you're just calling out. Uh, people do this anyway all day long. I was walking by a high school uh, in America recently. And there were a bunch of high school kids standing around. So I was listening to what they were talking about. And several of them were saying, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, this is like the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Because Hare means, oh my Lord. <laughs> and Krishna, the name Krishna, it addresses the original source of all attractive qualities. We really, as living entities, we want to be attracted to something. Like down in Shibuya, they put up big television sets. I mean, they make them so big, hoping people will be attracted to them. In my opinion, they have too many things. How could you concentrate on all those television sets? And different, all kinds of different signs to look at. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't help with one's meditation. Really. But it shows that living entities, that they're alive. They want to be attracted to something. In the material world, everyone keeps putting things up, saying, how about this, how about that, how about this? But uh, all of them are disappointing. But within the name Krishna is uh, all the attractiveness that we're looking for. And Rama means uh, spiritual happiness. Ramate yoga no anante satchidanda yada mani iti rama patenasu Rama buyabhidayate. This uh, name Rama is chanted by uh, great elevated personalities. 
And um, they find the greatest happiness in just saying Rama. So just say Rama three times. Rama, Rama, Rama. Rama. And just by saying Rama, you'll feel spiritual happiness. And also strength. And then when you put the Hare Krishna mantra together with these three names, and, and then it becomes uh, the mantra that we chant. What you get is the, the supreme combination of syllables. If, uh, by saying those combination of syllables, then you become the perfect yogi. And you develop qualities like compassion. And uh, when you keep chanting Hare Krishna, Krishna will come and get you from the material world. And he'll help to guide you. Whenever I'm working on a, a, a difficult situation, and I do pick up my bead bag, and I start chanting, because I can't figure out anything else to do. And Krishna always gives me the answer. And I always, I was, I'm surprised every time. But I think, of course, because Krishna's directly there in his name. Krishna Goswami Krishna no says this at the beginning of the Bhagavatam. Apana Samsutim Goran, Yandama Vibhishogranam, Tata Sadyo Vimucheta, Yabi Peti Swayambayam. What this means is just by chanting Hare Krishna, you can cross over birth and death. And he also says, any fear that you have, if you, if you chant Hare Krishna, then that fear will go away. So there's nothing more important in our lives than the practice of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And finally, one last point about practice. I found that if I, I focus on the process and not the result or the product, it helps me to practice better. Just, I just try to concentrate on, on doing it better. And let the result come whenever it comes. But I like to read things about how the result will come in due course of time. And it also about how there's nothing better than the Hare Krishna mantra. Because the problem my mind has is that it always wants something better. No matter what I get, I, my mind always thinks, well, this one's going to break, I should have another one, or isn't there something better than this one? <laughs> but the more I hear about the Hare Krishna mantra, that there's nothing better than this. <laughs> we 
you done with the sentence? <laughs> Madam, we get. Get what, what did I say? You, you would think um, you think about there's nothing better than that. Yeah, if I know if I know <coughs> there's nothing better than that, then my mind can be a little peaceful for a while. <coughs> the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. And thanks for coming out to the Bhagavad Gita class tonight. We may be the only ones in Tokyo tonight. Sitting here reading Bhagavad Gita. Everyone else is going through all the newspapers and all the stuff they bought today. I'm feeling very dissatisfied. I know you and Margot are both really tired. Oh. But I just want to ask one more question. Okay. I'm not tired, but I know everybody else is, so I'm just talking about I can see Margot is like toasted. But um, I'm just curious. You know, I heard that Prabhupada said that it took him 40 years to perfect his chanting. And I wanted to know if that was true and if you would just know the story. It wasn't exactly like that that I heard. But Charudas, who uh, joined the Hare Krishna movement in 1969 or 70 in, in Australia. He had been in the movement a couple of years and probably came there to Australia. And he asked Prabhupada, how long does it take to, to perfect one's chanting? And he said Prabhupada took a moment or two to answer. Then he said about 40 years. So, you can mark your calendars. <laughs> but really do try to practice for 40 years, because if you make gaps, then you have to make up for it later. It's not generally, right? It took Prabhupada 40 years. No, he didn't say it took me 40 years. That was something. Prabhupada, as far as I can see, is pretending was always good. He was just saying in general. It was a spontaneous answer based on what it takes people who are serious to attain perfection in chanting. So feel free to practice uh, chanting Hare Krishna with full attention. Because uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj will back you up. Gorky Shor Das Babaji Maharaj will be on your side. Gorky Shor Das Babaji Maharaj will will appreciate what you're doing. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur will, will be like gushing with pride for you. Srila Prabhupada will smile upon you for taking time to practice your chanting of Hare Krishna. And your Diksha and Shiksha Gurus will uh, be very, very uh, happy. And your life also will become better. 
And there's nothing else in, in this life that will make it better except for chanting Hare Krishna with good practice habits. So I now remember what Krishna told you tonight. Abhyasa Yogi Uttana, practice well the, the process of yoga. And we make a prayer here tonight at um, ISKCON Tokyo. That Shishi Nitai Gaur Sundar will bless us with the taste for practicing the chanting of Hare Krishna. And that someday soon we may hear one of the mantras that when we're chanting. <laughs> we may become completely fascinated by hearing it. Interested. Intrigued. Appreciate it. And then after that happens, we'll lose interest in all other mundane things. No more Shibuya. No more radio, no more television. It will all just be uninteresting to us. Only Hare Krishna. Everyone agrees with this prayer, please say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Everyone agrees with this prayer with enthusiasm, say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Now, if you're on uh, listening online and you're driving your car or at your house, uh, roll down your window or open your window and say Hare Krishna outside. <laughs> but watch the road, watch the road. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And keep the vibration going all the time. There's no law that says you have to stop. Bancho Kabdurusha, Kripas, the Mabuchapatitan of Pavan, if you wish to make you the one who will not go to the question of the Jah, Shilpra, but Gijah, Gorhatri, 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 Gorhat